Genesis, we started looking at gender pay a few years ago, and when we started looking at it, we found that we needed to go into increasingly levels of detail in order to understand the problem. So when you start looking at a high level, uh, you can see what men, how men are paid compared to women, and vice versa. And then you start to say, well, how do I solve that? What do I do about it if we see that on average women are paid less than men? So we started the journey a few years ago, and out of that we, um, we coined the phrase minding the gap, which is a policy we put in place to affect change. At Genesis, we measure the gender pay gap by comparing medium salary by band, which is then segmented by type of band. In addition to data on the gender pay gap itself, we also review metrics relating to women in leadership, hiring, development and promotion. We are committed to publicly sharing our data via our annual report. We also provide regular reports to the Human Resources and Remuneration Committee of our board. It's important to measure the gender pay gap because when you start measuring it, you start to learn what's going on in your organisation and where the problems are. And once you start measuring, you can start diagnosing and putting solutions in place that fix it. As we became more sophisticated in measuring the gender pay gap, we learned there were three primary drivers. The first one at the lowest level is whether women are paid fairly compared to men for the same type of job in a like-for-like -like role. And we check and we make sure that the women are paid fairly. And over time, we've managed to close that pay equity gap considerably. The second um, thing we learned when we started measuring was that actually hierarchy is a key player here. We've started to put more policies in place around flexible working, the ability to come back from maternity leave and have more flexibility as you enter the workplace. And that's important to ensure that there's equal footing as men and women progress in their careers. The third thing we learned as we were looking at measuring this gap is that actually there's a systemic issue around job type. We have certain careers that are more attracted by women and certain careers where men are more attracted to it. And we've got to start to break that down. We sought guidance from Statistics New Zealand on how best to meet our legal requirements under the Equal Pay Act 1972. We now conduct six monthly reviews to ensure equal pay for equal work. As part of this, we use a job sizing methodology as a robust framework. This process takes into consideration variables like role size, tenure, performance and position, and pay increases within the salary band. We also consulted with our people to gather their ideas regarding both causes and potential solutions to gender pay inequity. We found this was an important diagnostic tool for understanding our own data. It's important that we share what is working and what isn't, and learn from one another. One way we do this is by ensuring that our CEO and senior leaders speak publicly about how we are closing our gender pay gap in the press, at conferences, and through social media. In summary, we need companies to start measuring the gender gap, and as they start measuring it, breaking it down into its component parts. What we've learned is that as you start to break it down into its component parts, you learn what the issues are that are driving it, and then you can put policies and practices in place to solve it.